struck I did um boxing in the fifth grade and I trained for like a month and a half and took a fight against a kid that was like five and oh got my ass whooped in like 15 seconds but I don't really count that so download the all-star app make your picks for UFC fights challenge your friends level up and win prizes link in description get it now Peyton man um a1 combat bandweight champion just after a couple of fights two title defenses now you're on the contender series is it playing out like you planned or is it happening faster than you expected uh it's happening a little bit faster than i expected but um i didn't really plan for this from the get-go um but i think you know looking at my wins and my resume and the people that i beat i think i'm right where i need to be what was the plan then was there a plan for a different career uh yeah i mean i just never really planned on getting this far with fighting i just did it because i really enjoyed it um and just kind of as an outlet at first and then after i beat hector i think um things kind of transitioned because i started to see the amount of attention and social engagement and some of the possibilities so um i was going to be a firefighter um and then i was going to maybe use my psych degree but um i'm gonna just spend some time with fighting first and then i might get to those things later it's good to have a backup plan especially in this sport right yeah now uh junior cortez man he's gonna be your opponent on the contender series what do you think of him in the fighting style um i think he's a good opponent um especially for my style um i think there's gonna be a lot of boxing and i think the night i fight him he's gonna try to be a wrestler so that's what i'm prepared for but um, I don't think he is dangerous in terms of volume or finishing power. Um, he's a pretty basic fighter. I don't, I don't see much special when I watch him. So yourself, you got a wrestling background, but you have a hundred percent knockout, right? Your striking is, is what stands out. If you watch the fights, what striking art did you start with and, and how did it evolve from there? Um, so, I mean, I guess wrestling is really my only background. Um, but I'd say because I did it, you know, in high school, you know, I got my fix of wrestling, so I'm tired of doing that. I don't want to do it in a fight. So, um, I just went to an MMA gym after that, when I went to college and that's been it for me. I never really did striking, uh, training. We just kind of do everything at my gym. Uh, I struck, I did, um, boxing in the fifth grade and I trained for like a month and a half and took a fight against a kid that was like five and oh got my ass whooped in like 15 seconds but I don't really count that so in fifth grade elementary school fifth grade yeah I had only been training for like a month and my coach put me up against this like killer at the time and I didn't even get to fight he like threw a bunch of shots at me for like 10 seconds and my coach threw in the towel before I could even do anything so I like quit after that. I was like, fuck this fighting's dumb. So that was like your first taste of competition, like combat competition then. Yeah. In terms of combat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So when did you actually get back? I guess the wrestling was the, the, the next step after that, right? After that yeah. experience, or did you continue boxing a little bit more? No, I never really continued boxing. I always like would get in fights here and there with my friends, but I mean, I did football throughout my whole like, childhood and i mean that's kind of combative with all the collision but um i did football up until high school uh, i played through high school and then i did wrestling as well in high school do you think playing football allows you to be more comfortable with collision because that's what fighting is it's just collision after collision yeah i mean i don't i don't think that makes a person be okay with it i just think in my personality like i played football just because i wanted to crash into people and hit people <laughs> Some people don't like that about football. So, uh, but I think it, it helped a little bit. Um, it helped me be smart because you can't just like throw your head into someone. You got to do it smart. Um, so it helped me be able to, you know, minimize damage when I'm tackling someone. So I'd like to think that that translates. Let's go back to your last fight against Christian Rivas, man. The, the A1 combat championship fight, the arm bar in the second round. Did he tap? I think that he did, but I think he took it back, like, mentally. Like, he's, like, he realized that he tapped once or maybe twice and was like, no, I take it back. So, um, I'm glad he didn't tap because I got some highlight reels out of that fight, and mm -hmm. I would have been kind of uh, bummed out if it was finished that early. Well, that would have been your first submission, right? Like, that, that would have been all right. 
Yeah, but I don't want submissions. <laughs> You're lame. <laughs> submissions are lame. Um, you were talking to him in the third round before you finished him. What were you saying? Yeah, um, so he only really speaks Spanish. So mm -hmm. um, I'm like, okay, it's Spanish. I know a little bit here and there. So mm -hmm. I said, dame la Christian, which means like, give it to me. And then I said, no lucha su destino, which means you can't fight your destiny. And I was just chirping at him here and there, like on delay, you know, just simple <laughs> phrases. So that's that's got to be demoralizing, right? When you have to throw in the, the multilingual, you know, skills on him before you beat his ass, right? It's just... Yeah, he didn't he didn't really like hearing the Destiny one, but uh, his ears were probably ringing at that point anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, man, you heard him. Like, I, I, is that the fight where you dropped him like three times, or was it the fight before that? That was the fight before that. Um, okay, Jimenez, right? Yeah, yeah, I dropped that dude. Yeah. Um, yeah, like I think it was like three times in a row, and you just you face some tough dudes, man, because you've like clipped a lot of dudes. That Jimenez fight, you clipped him, I think, in the first round, and you kind of did this like pose. Yeah. What was that? What was the pose? <laughs> just like that. <laughs> that was right side up. <clears throat> was that the? Was that? Is that your thing? Like we're gonna see that more? Uh, I don't know. Maybe forms of it. Um, mm -hmm. it's not really my thing. I just felt it in the moment and. Um, I just wanted to give him another chance to get up and maybe get another shot in, you know, give him, uh, give him another chance to show me who he was. Well, you, he definitely got up and, and you showed him who he was. Um, you mentioned after the last fight that you suffered a hernia injury. Did you get surgery for that? Did you get that fixed? What was going on with that? Um, so I, I suffered a hernia right after I fought Hector, which was before that fight. Um, I got surgery, oh. they took care of it. And then I think three weeks before I fought, uh, Rivas, I got kicked in that same exact spot and it blew up again and it looked exactly like a hernia. Um, I didn't have as much pain, but I thought that was just because of all the scar tissue. So, um, I saw a doctor and he was definite, like he was sure that I had to get surgery and then. I was like, maybe we should just schedule an ultrasound just to see. So, because I was super cautious. I was like, I don't want to get cut down there again if I don't have to. I have three incisions down there in my groin area. So, you know, the more you get, the more you risk losing feeling in uh, your genitals. So I definitely don't want that. Yeah. So we got the ultrasound and he saw, he was like, I can't see where the hernia is. So um, it might just be so small and benign that we just don't do surgery. And if you can get through the pain, then... Let's just um, not do it for now. But if it gets worse, we'll do it. So um, it's been fine. Um, it's, it's definitely pain, painful here and there, but I'm okay. I'm able to get through it, and I don't want to go under the knife again. Oh, for sure, especially in that area, man. Damn, that's uh, yeah, it's dangerous. Like to me, though, that area in the spine is the most nerve-wracking places to be injured. Yeah, yeah, I I take that over the spine, but they both suck. You yeah, know, with the for sure. Um, you know, when you look at the record, you're undefeated, you know, you have all finishes, but fighting is never without obstacles. Which fight do you feel like had the most adversity for you? Um, within the fight, within the fight, ahead of the fight, you know how the game works. Yeah. Um, I would say my debut was probably the toughest because two weeks before that fight, um, my partner threw like a spinning back elbow and, um, I'm like 90% sure he broke my nose that day and my nose is already busted. So, um, I was thinking like, I might not be able to fight because anytime my nose got touched, like it was excruciating. Um, but then, you know, I knew that he was uh, a wrestler, so I didn't think I was going to have to box with him too much. So I went on with it anyway, but I had tons of people telling my coach not to let me take that fight because he's a, an AKA guy and he's like kind of sandbagging and he's just way above my competition level. So there's a little bit of mental stuff, but I mean, I like to think that that's just naysayers in Reno. So, well, you got, you went in there and you know, you got a, a knockout finish your team, Reno Academy. How did you end up with them? They were the first gym that popped up when I Googled MMA in my area. So I just went in one day and I fell in love with their gym and um, the trainers and everyone like 
the day I stepped in. So um, I've been with them ever since. Do you do all your training there, every single bit of it? Pretty much. Uh, lately, I've branched out to um, Alpha Male and MMA Gold. So I mm -hmm. drive down there. It's like two hours, um, probably about once a month, and just do some sparring with them. But I've pretty much done all my training at Reno Academy of Combat. I know he's kind of big compared to you, but Anthony Hernandez, you know, I've spoken with him many times, and he's a machine. Like, he has cardio for days. Like, you also – as yourself you have cardio do you do any kind of work with him um no but what's funny we sparred like one round and just mm -hmm. kind of played around a little bit and uh he took it easy on me um he's a big boy he's good at wrestling mm -hmm. but he actually let me stay on his couch one of the times i trained down there and um i just like spent the night with him and talked to him and asked for advice on stuff so he's given me like navigation advice about the mma game and ufc and stuff like that but um hopefully i look forward to maybe sparring with him more in the future because he's he's a fun dude yeah for sure hopefully you guys get on the same card in the ufc you know what i mean it'd be cool yeah. to see that as well yeah. um the, the coaches man you know they're the ones that guide you who are they man that, you know reno academy it's kind of new to people in in the mma world um my head coach and owner of the gym is rick Collup. He's been in the game for a while. Um, a lot of, like, old school people know him. Um, Sinjin Smith, uh, he fought in Bellator once, but he has a bunch of injuries. If he wasn't injured, he'd be, like, top ten in the UFC easy. Um, and then Oscar Ramirez, he quit fighting a long time ago, but um, he's trained every day since. So he's also – I get really good rounds with him. So those are, like, my top three right there. Yeah, man, they, they've guided you really well. And, and – uh... Physically, man, you're five foot ten at bantam weight. There's like a couple guys that I could think of that are five foot ten. Maybe Sean O'Malley, um, Corey Sanhagen. How do you make the weight, man? That's I'm always because we've heard like guys that tall be like these dudes. They know something that other dudes don't know. Yeah, I just got that slim waist, man. I'm mm -hmm. like a 29 inch waist, so I think yeah. that helps out a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm like pretty pretty good about my diet i don't have any dietitians or anything i just do everything myself but um, i'm smart about water loading i've been cutting weight for wrestling um for a long time but it sucks man like every time i do it i'm like fuck this i'm not doing it. i'm not going to 35 again and then as soon as i eat i'm like ah that was fine that wasn't that bad that's the battle right and and how huge is, is it a, a, an advantage to have with that size though you know what i mean and the length it's huge um a range advantage is is huge because that's just before you deal with anything in fighting um stylistically or matchup wise you have to deal with the range like anything you want to do you have to get in on someone if you want to wrestle you have to beat my range if you want to strike with me you have to beat my range so um that's huge i don't think i use it to carry me because i'm really good in close quarters but i love having a range over people yeah and, and you use it very well um, and another thing that stands out about your performances, even though you only have five pro fights, is that you're very composed, man. You're very calm because a lot of the fights to do come out and to try to wrestle you for like the first five minutes and end up getting tired. And even in that, you know, you're still calm. Like, where does that yeah. come from? Yeah. So my girlfriend's her whole family calls me Sleepy P. So I mean, <laughs> and they just like say that I'm like a sleepwalker. So I think it's just my personality. Like, I'm really. Um, low vibration but um in the cage i just think you know obviously your skill is what you can take into the cage but it's also how much you can control your adrenaline dump so early on in my amateur career um that was something i really had to work because i would just go out and you know dump everything right away but i had good cardio so i'd get away with it but um i've always just wanted to look good while i performed so um throughout my amateur career i think i i got that down so that when i went pro i was already okay with it amazing and you know what are your expectations out of yourself in this fight coming up man it's, it's you're on the big stage you know i mean you're fighting for a contract i expect to finish out of myself and i just expect to uh show up and have fun and be myself i'm not going to try to put on any kind of fake persona or anything to impress um i'm just going to show up and be me and uh gonna try to uh peel all of junior's layers like an onion there you go august 8th 
Contender Series, UFC Apex. Peyton, thank you so much, man, for the time. I'm expecting fireworks, man, because, you know, I went back and watched a few of your fights, and I'm just like, this dude can't be in a boring fight. Yeah, exactly. <laughs>